I'm going to you know, just believe this morning for, for God to help us, to help us break through. There's a time of breakthrough. See, I, 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 want, to, I want to this morning break, believe for God to break the power of wrong thinking. You see, if, if I think I can't do it, if I think it's impossible, if I think it'll never happen, and like with Tom, with what God spoke to him, if he, if he thinks that he's missed it, if he thinks that, and if the enemy can sow that into his mind, it will never, ever come to pass. Because you're, you're fighting, you're battling, you're breaking, trying to break through all the mess that gets over our thinking. And, and God wants to, I believe, set us free that we can think straight, that we can think God thoughts. Amen? Breaking the power of wrong thinking. To, to be able to break that, you've got to know, number one, that God is for you. You, you, you see, I don't know, because I don't, there's not one of us here that most surely hasn't messed up. There's not one of us here that haven't done something that, that's wrong. But, you know, and, and so that wrong thinking, it's because of what I did when I was, when I was 16 years of age, what I did back there, what I'd, what I, I thank God today that whatever happened back there is cleansed, amen? It's gone, it's finished, it's done for. But I've got to know that God is for me. I've got, I've got to know that, that God loves me so much that, that, that while I was yet a sinner, he died for me. See, a lot of people exempt themselves. They take themselves out of the equation. They, they take themselves uh, away from uh, under, getting underneath the spout where the glory comes out. And they're over here in that thing, well, God couldn't touch me. I've been too bad. I've done all this. I've done all that. And, and the way we think, that's how you live. You live away from, from what God is wanting to do in our hearts. And, and I thank God that, that he loves us so much that while we're yet sinners, he, he, he died for me. See, God wants to surround you with his love. The, see, this is God. God is not the, the picture that a, a lot of people paint that he's got a big lump of wood and he's wanting to bash you over the head with it if you do something wrong or he wants to send you to hell. No, God did everything possible to keep us from hell. He doesn't want to send us to hell and, and he gets no pleasure out of people who deny him. He gets no pleasure out of people that, that don't accept what he's done for them. He, he, he gets no pleasure out of that at all. He wants to surround us with his love and he wants to surround us with his presence. And that's why a bunch of people can come into a, into a hired hall and, and, and start to sing a few songs to, a, to CDs or whatever, whatever that is, discs or something, and lift up our hands and the presence of God comes in. Or a bunch of people can go out the back there before the service and start to pray and the anointing comes down and, 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 and the presence of God gets around our lives. God, just, God is waiting for an opportunity to, to, to get around us. He wants to surround us with his love. He wants to surround us with his presence. He wants to touch us. You see, nothing outside of yourself can separate you from the love of God. It's our self that separates ourselves. So, Father, I'm asking you right now, that Lord, that you will break the strongholds of wrong thinking. My God, that you will help us to... to to break out of that thinking. And, and, and even though I know I don't deserve it, my God, but you want me to have it. You want so much to, to, to fill my life with your love and with your mercy and, and with your joy and with your victory and everything that, that you've made available to us, which is exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or think. So exceedingly abundantly, Lord, there's so much more that you have for us, the church. And Lord, we're, we're believing for you to, to, to come in your own special way and help us. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory because we, we just want to be part of this great end time revival that's coming to our nation and the nations of the world. Amen. Here's a story I want to speak to you about. And, and, and it's just after the children of Israel had uh, made themselves a molten calf and went out and lived in a, in a sin attitude and horrible things happened and God got mad with them. God wanted to kill them. But Moses stood in the gap and started to cry out to God and pleaded with God. But I guess it's, it's a bit, little bit like our lives when, 
when we've done stupid things and we've walked away of the world and we've done this and, and, and that God still loves us. And, and sometimes if we just think about the, the wrong that we've done, we'll never be able to enter into the fullness that God has for our lives. We'll never be able to perhaps accept it. But we've got to be able to do that. We've got to know that God loves us. And so here's, this is a, a beautiful story. And in Exodus chapter 33, I'm going to read from verse 9. And I, while I was just looking at this a little while ago, it starts off, and it came to pass. And I realized that that's something that was in your word that I had for you too. It will come to pass. And it would be great to find out how many times throughout the Word of God it says, and it came to pass. <laughs> Just like God said, and it came to pass. I'm certainly going to check that out and uh, in my concordance and find out how many times he said that. But, you know, whatever God says will come to pass. And it, will, and it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and the... Sorry, I'm just going to have to get my glasses. That page just started to move all over the place. Then. First couple of lines are okay, but I think I'm getting a little bit, uh, yeah. And it came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle that the pillar of cloud descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. Isn't that wonderful? All the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tabernacle door and all the people rose and worshipped, each man in his tent door. So the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. We've got to start to see some of these things. God spoke to Moses as a man speaks to his friend. It wasn't, I am Jehovah. I am Almighty God and I have come down to bring judgment upon your life and I'm here to, to check you out. He talked to him as a friend. Hey, Tom, how you going, mate, today? Is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything you need? You know, I just want to let you know, Tom, that I really appreciate you and I, I think you're a great guy. As a, I, not as, a, as an enemy, but as a friend. God spoke to Moses as a friend. What an amazing thing that is. God comes and he, he wants to just, we've got to, I guess, change the pictures that are in our mind and understand that, that God mightn't be the, as we think he is. The Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. And Moses would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. And Mo Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people. He's already remembered this people that he's going to bring up. They're ones that he wasn't away from too long. They, they rejected him. They rejected God. They wanted other gods. And so he's saying, Hey, God, hey, look, you see, and you've got to understand the context of what he's saying. He said to me, Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you've not let me know who you will send with me. Yet you've said, I know your name. And you've also found grace in my sight. Therefore, I pray, if I've found grace in your sight, show me your way. Show me your way. God, show me how to navigate through this situation. Show me how to navigate that I might know you. You see, God wants to reveal himself through the power, through the anointing, through his love, through his mercy, through his grace, so that we get to know him as he is, not as we think he is. And I believe that this is where we're at, where the church has got to come to. We've got to find out that we might find him, that we might know you, that I might find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And this is what he said to Moses. He said, and God said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses said to him, 
if your present doesn't go with us, don't bring us up. <laughs> if your present doesn't go with us, can I say this? I would not be in this house if the presence of God didn't come into this house. What's the good of bashing your gums and just having a meeting if the presence of God doesn't come? Amen? If God doesn't come and meet with us, if God doesn't come and touch us. Just sitting, standing beside this lady this morning and don't know her all that well, but here rolling down her cheek because there was something touching her it was outside the natural. The Spirit of God comes into the house. He said, hey, he said, hey, if, if, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't take me. Don't, I, don't, I don't want to go anywhere. Don't, don't take me from this place. Don't bring us up from here. And the Lord said in verse 17, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And then Moses said, Please show me your glory. Please show me your glory. God and Moses, God, Moses and God himself, God himself spoke with each other as friends do. They reasoned together. You can, you can talk with God. You can ask him questions. He, he's interested. He's not like that person that you talked to the other day and while, while you're talking to them, their, their eyes are not looking at you. They're looking over your shoulder at somebody else and they're not even interested in what you're saying. God is very interested in what you're saying. He's God, amen. You want me to do this and that? But if I found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I might know you. God said, my presence will go with you. Then Moses said, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't bring us up from here. Then Moses spoke about seeing his glory. See, the glory is the atmosphere of heaven. The glory is the presence of God. See, as far as I'm concerned, that's really what's important, the presence of God. In Azusa Street, the great revival in, that, in America, back about a hundred and something years ago, they called it the Shekinah glory. It came in by way of a cloud or a mist. People were saved, healed, delivered in that atmosphere. See, there's an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere of worship. There's an atmosphere of praise. There's an atmosphere when you pray. It's not, we're not just going through a ritual. We're not just doing something because we have to do it. But there's an atmosphere as you, as, as, as you want to come before God and, and as you lift up your hands and Sometimes in, in, in your prayer, it's, you've got to remember, it's like talking to a friend. You, you say, God, I don't know. I, I really don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I, I don't know what the next step is. I, I don't know how to navigate through this. And it's, and it's an attitude in, in how you approach God. And God then will speak with you and, share with you and touch you and, and, and meet with you. It's an atmosphere. It's an amazing thing. But people were saved, healed, and delivered in that atmosphere. That atmosphere came in as they praised. As they began to praise, they said that this smoke would come in. And in the natural, in the natural, I find this very, very hard to understand having smoke coming in without a smoke machine. But somehow or other, this smoky cloud would come in. And it's not just one person, literally thousands upon thousands of people that have written things about this cloud that came in. The children would, would, would be in it, play in it. 
It would just come in, and, and, and it might have been so, so far off the ground that as they praised it, would, praised, it would just come in. As the pastor sat on the platform with his head in an apple box. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But that's what he would do because he didn't want people to see him. He, he found something to hide inside. So I think it was that the pulpit was two apple crates with a bit of timber on the top, so I'd stick his head in there. And just keep, get a, didn't want to see what was going on around about him, didn't want to know what was going on, he just wanted to know God. When he felt it was right, he would get up and he'd start to minister in the power of God. But this cloud would come in as they praised, but then as they worshipped, it would increase, and it would rise, it would rise, and, and people were just being amazingly touched by the power of God. I don't know about you, but this is what I long for. This is what I long for the supernatural manifestation of God. I long for something beyond just, just, just church. And at the moment, what I, what I sense as I, as I sit there, stand there, whatever it is, with my hands raised and entering into the, the, the worship, the praise, and, and I just sense the presence of God. It was lovely as I could look over to this lady and, and just saw a tear rolling down her cheek. And you know that the presence of God is in the place and touching us. And that's where we're at right now. But how many people want to see that increase? See, we want to see that increase. I, I'm thankful for what we've got right now, but I want to see more, amen? And as you ask God for the more, as you ask God, and I don't know what He's going to do. I, I don't know how He's going to do it. All, all I know is that He wants to do it. In Hebrews uh, 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 2 verse 4, it says, Signs and wonders and miracles happen. God did this. God did it. God did perform signs and wonders and miracles. He did it himself. You see, in church life, you can build an atmosphere that pleases the flesh. That's how seeker-friendly got started. They pushed the Spirit of God out. Churches were birthed in that seeker-friendly thing. Or we can build an atmosphere that energizes, <laughs> that, that sort of stirs you. How many people want to get stirred a bit this morning? That stirs us up a bit, amen. Stirs the spirit man, affects the spirit man. What we need to understand also is that we are body, soul, and spirit. I'm not just a spirit man. I'm a body man too. I've got a cut here, amen. <laughs> I, I bleed too and I, you know, I, I, I can, if I hit my finger with a hammer, it hurts. We're body, soul, and spirit. I believe that as humans, we need both. I don't just want to be walking around the place and, and Somebody see me in the shopping center and they say, Hey, go, oh, hallelujah, glory to God, shakabundi, you. Yeah. I'm a super spiritual freak. I just want to be real, amen. A real person that knows that I'm a spirit person, but I've also a uh, 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 body, soul, and spirit. I'm a body too. And I believe that we need both in our lives, but when we come to church, it should be a spiritual atmosphere, amen. We need the Spirit of God. See, a bit of an example, most people don't leave churches for spiritual reasons. They leave for totally natural reasons. Uh, the air conditioning's too cold. The music's too loud. <laughs> and man, you should see the color they painted the foyer. That's not a good enough reason to leave the church, is it? But Moses didn't want to go anywhere if God wasn't in it. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 12, it says, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. A lot of things that in the natural might seem right to us, but the end thereof is death. Last week I spoke from the uh, book of Isaiah 55, 8 and 11, 
And I just want to just bring a couple of highlights out, if you don't mind, that God watches over his word. God watches over it. And you think, you know, God himself is watching over what he said. The word shall not return to him void. It will accomplish what it says. It will prosper. It will bring forth. It will produce. All that God has spoken in his word will come to pass. Do you believe that today? All that God has ever spoken. And I said the other week that it will take courage, but I want to add another word to see God do what he's going to do and for you and I to rise, rise up. It's going to take courage and passion and conviction. They're the things, the ingredients that we need for the church to rise up and start to declare what the Word of God says. Peter, in the book of Acts 2.14, amazing, he spoke, and he, and he spoke about things that had happened a hundred years before. It was spoken by the prophet Joel. He said, these men are not drunk as you suppose, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will come to pass. I don't know when this move of God is going to come to pass. All I know is it's going to come to pass. I pray it's in our generation. I pray it's in our time, but if it's not, I'm just going to keep praying it through. We're going to, this generation will continue to pray it through. We'll continue to believe it. I, I, it's why we want to see young people coming into the church because we want to keep that, that vision before them. We want to keep sowing it into them so that if God does tarry, that they will carry that vision of revival. It just won't be a, a, a vision of going to church and having a good time. But we're, experience, we're believing to experience a revival. Peter spoke, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Courage is not the lack of fear, but it's the master of fear. We can't let fear stop us. I, I believe that God is going to do great things. Courage really is assurance. God said it, and it will come to pass. It's got to be courage. I've seen people that, you know, where they've had a, a word spoken over them that said that by a doctor, perhaps, or something like that. And, and sometimes we embrace what the doctor says. But you've got to embrace what the Word of God says. And it takes courage to say, hey, that's not going to happen to me. I don't believe that's going to happen to me. I know that, you know, it takes courage to, to believe what God says. Courage comes from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It comes from the power of God. Remember long before the day of Pentecost, Peter is now standing up saying, hey, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. But you guys, I want you to know too, you've just killed the Messiah. You've just wiped out God. You've just... You've just messed up what God's wanting to do. And so they were challenged. What an amazing thing that this man who had, who had denied Jesus three times is now changed by the Holy Spirit. If I say this, madam, what you need is the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. Sir, what you need is to open up yourself to the, to the anointing of God so the mighty power of the Holy Ghost can come upon you guys. The power of the anointing of God, that's where the victory is, amen. That's what will help you, sis. That's what will help you, sir. That's what will break the strongholds. Strongholds that get around our lives. I'm sorry if I'm picking on you today, but, but you don't come very often. <laughs> so so, so I've got to get you while you're here, amen. <laughs> He only comes once a month, so I get him every month. <laughs> That's where the power comes from, a man who was denying and everything like that and, and, and full of fear and now is full of the Holy Ghost. That's all we need is to get full of the Holy Ghost. Peter denied Jesus, but courage comes from the mighty Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power that's in you now. Something inside you now. The Holy Spirit is working mightily in us. The Word of God is working mightily in us. 
the power of God, the Holy Spirit is working mightily in our nation. See, if we just look at our nation, look at the, 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 the disease and the COVID thing, and we look at, at, at what's happening in, in our governments and in our parliaments, and goodness knows what, it's, it's upside down. They don't know whether they're coming or going. They don't know who they can trust. There's so much slander. There's so much rubbish going on. If we look at that in the natural, we can get so confused and so full of negativity and failure and defeat. But I want to tell you this because I believe it, because this land is the great south land of the Holy Spirit. It was prophesied years ago, and I believe that God, by His Spirit, is working mightily over Australia. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, there's been words spoken over the, uh, the Sunshine Coast that I believe God is working mightily in. And I want to tell you that we've had words spoken over this church, and I believe right now, by the Spirit of God, that He is working mightily in this church, whether you see it or not. Whether you can comprehend that, what I'm saying, or not, but I believe it, and I, and I know that God can change. I've often said this, you know, they say, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I ought to tell you this, God can make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Amen. God can make a champion out of you. He can make a mighty warrior out of you, amen. He can change your life forever and ever and ever. He can put backbone back inside us. He can put his spirit inside us. I believe the spirit is at work doing things in our lives, in our city, and in our nation that we are not fully aware of. You believe that today? Sometimes people get a glimpse. They get a glimpse of what God's doing, and they stand up and they start to prophesy. And many times when they start to prophesy about what God's about to do and what God's doing and, and, the, and the realm of the Spirit, in their mind people think, no, nah, how could that be? But we get a glimpse every now and then. We get a glimpse of what, what God is saying, what God is doing. We've got to be fully aware of things that we're not really aware of yet. But it will be revealed as the church begins to rise from the ashes. I have to encourage myself with things like this. God is brooding over this city. God is brooding over my life by His Spirit, wanting to fulfill every, 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 every little thing that he has for me. Can you believe that? I've waited a long time <laughs> for a lot of things to happen, but I know that God is brooding over me and over you because, you see, he has deposited certain things in your life. The enemy might have snatched it. The enemy might have taken you off course, the enemy might have you out in some backwater somewhere, might have you there, but doesn't matter. The day you got born in natural, God put things into your life that is brooding over, that is brooding over. Some people never, ever see the fulfillment of what God put into their lives. You've got to get under the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> You've got to open up your life to the spirit world You've got to let the King of Glory come in. The King of Glory. Who is this King of Glory? He is a Lord strong and mighty in battle. He is the King of Glory. It's not some wimpy little, little, little gay Mardi Gras thing. It's the King of Glory that wants to come into your life. The Lord who is strong and mighty in battle. No little wimpy thing. The Lord strong and mighty. He wants to come in and he wants to help me. But you see, more than that, he wants to somehow or other water all the, the things that are in my life and somehow or other that I can get faith to start to believe. And I believe, friends, I believe, I believe that we're going to see altars filled with thousands upon thousands of people coming to Christ. We're going to see it, I believe, because God has promised and is moving over the city. 
you might think to yourself, and what we're trying to do is break the stronghold of wrong thinking. Wrong thinking. I am a candidate to be successful. Hallelujah. I am a candidate to be more than a conqueror. I am a candidate to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I am a candidate to cast out demons. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am a candidate because I carry a DNA when I got born again that totally transformed my life, transformed your life. Because you might say, who am I that God would use me? That God would want to use me this way. Who am I? I'm not Abraham. I'm not Moses. I'm not Joshua. I'm not one of the great patriarchs. I'm just a carpenter. Um, or you might be a housewife. In the Old Testament, God chose special people to come upon. That was the Old Testament. But today we've got a new covenant, a new testament, amen. And God poured out His Spirit on all flesh. Hey, turn to somebody and say, I'm a candidate. I'm a candidate. I am a candidate. And Acts 1, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Acts 2, verse 1, it says, uh, you know, on the day of Pe when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in one accord, one place. But all of a sudden, there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind that came from heaven, and it filled the whole place. I tell you what, friends, oh, shakaranda, mostobundi. I believe that we could have those experiences, amen. I only believe all things are possible. Get somewhere, and the whole place where we're seated can be shaken, amen. And the fire of God come in, can come in, and we'll be totally transformed and changed in the twinkling of an eye, just like Peter and the rest of the disciples and 120 people that were in that upper room were totally changed. I, I believe that this is where we are right now. God is about to pour out His Spirit again. And I, I want to read uh, verses of Scripture to you that I believe are so amazing, amazing, amazing. It's found in Ephesians. And we've got to read this book often. Read the whole of Ephesians as many times as you can. It, it's an amazing book. And, and it says, I'm just going to start reading from verse 17. And the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom. How many people want that? If you, if, when I say it, if you want it, just lift up your hand. Say, I'll have that. <laughs> and revelation, the knowledge of him, I'll have that. The eyes of your understanding being light, I have that. <laughs> that you may know what is hope is, I'll have that. <laughs> what are the riches of the calling, I, I'll have that. And what is the exceeding greatness of it, I'll have that. Towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ. Frank's got his hand up all the time. <laughs> when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his own right hand in heavenly places far above, you are far above principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins. This is where we're at, friends. I tell you what, this is what God wants to do. He wants to come into your life. And it can be as you worship, as you praise, as you, as you just cry out to God that that mighty anointing would come, the King of glory would come in. This is what, and it will come to pass if you believe it, if you just reach out and say, Jesus, will you come in today? Will you, will you fill me again today? Will you touch me today, my God? Will you help me? He wants to talk to you like that. And he, and he hears you cry and he wants to come. He wants to equip you. He wants to fill you. He, he wants to touch you in a mighty way. And, and, and in reality, he's it, 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 stirring up deep, deep wells. Ken Addison, that's what God's doing. He's stirring up deep, deep wells in you. Frank, deep, deep wells are being stirred on the inside of you. Some of the young people that come the other day, that, that they, one of them come up to me, he said, Neil, he said, I, I feel stirred. I feel stirred today. Stirring up deep, deep wells. How many people want to get stirred? How many people really want to get changed? How many people really want, you know, friend, well, you've got to respond. You've got to, you've got to open it. You can't just say, oh, well, you know. If, if, look, if,
If Nancy said to me the other day, and I'm sitting in the car with her, and she said, I'd like an ice cream. I'd like an ice cream. And, and you know, I just said, oh, that's a good thought. <laughs> she would never have got the ice cream, amen. I had to drive around, find a spot, get the park, find a park, go over there and buy the ice cream. <laughs> I had to go and get the ice cream, amen. No, because I, I'd, I'd like to get touched by God. <laughs> I would like all those things. I would love this. I would love. No, you've got to go get it, amen. Come buy from me. What's that scripture, Tom? Come buy from me. Hey, what does it say? Hey? There's a lot of them around. But, and yeah, yeah. No, that's, but what are they going to buy? Wine and Revelation 3.10. What does it say, Johnny? Jakabundi. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> I'm going to buy an ice cream today. <laughs> but you, what I'm saying is you've got to go and get it. You've got to go after it, amen. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Tom was talking in the communion about drawing near to God and he will draw near to you. If you stay in the car, he can't get in the car perhaps. All those things. You know, who knows, who's my drift here? Are we? Oh, good, good. All right. Millie's, Millie's caught. Millie's happy. She's right. We're, 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 we're good. So God's stirring up deep, deep wells. Let me ask you the question. Do you want to be stirred again? Do you want to be stirred again? Do you want to be part of what God is doing by His Spirit? Or do you want to be one that runs out of oil? Forgot to trim the, forgot to buy oil. Buy oil of me or something. Yeah. Buy oil from me. Friend, it's time to get oil, amen? Let's stand to our feet again. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. I'm asking you today that you know that God, God, I, I, just, I feel like I, I've been boxed in. I feel like I've been, been shut up a bit. I haven't had the freedom and liberty to, to share and do things that I want to do in, in, in you, my God. So I'm asking you right now, if that's you, would, and you're saying, God, I want to be stirred again. I want to be stirred again. That you just slip out of your seat and come out the front here. Just come out the front and let the Spirit of God touch you. Let, let, let the power of God get a hold of your life. Lord Jesus, would you touch us today? I'm asking you too today, if there's nothing wrong with you, you're feeling good, but you just want to be stirred again, you can, you can come too and just, be, just come out here and let the Spirit of God get around your life. Just let God touch you. Just get out of the car and come to the shop. <laughs> I, hate saying it like, I hate saying it like that, but that's, I, I, I dislike saying it like that. I just, you've just got to get out. You've just got to get out.